University of Virginia Health System, we're for sharing the latest health information from top minds to keep you and your family healthy. With UVA Health System Radio, here's Melanie Cole. For some patients with spine conditions, minimally invasive surgery may just be an option. My guest today is Dr. Hamid Hassanzada. He's an orthopedic surgeon whose specialties include minimally invasive spine surgery at UVA. Welcome to the show, Dr. Hassanzada. Tell us a little bit about the difference between minimally invasive surgery and traditional spinal surgeries. Thanks very much for having me. So minimally invasive surgery is a newer technique which has been um, promoted or been developed over the last decade, the benefit over uh, open classic open surgery is that you don't need to detach or cut through the muscle. So it's a muscle spurring um, procedure. By just dilating the muscle, we get in the area we want to work and we can uh, perform the work we want to do without creating new damage to the muscle and the soft tissue um, around the spine. And you have to know that a lot of the uh, um, a late complication of the spine is related to the soft tissue coverage of the spine. Um, so we try to um, minimize that complication with the, um, approaching the spine to minimum invasive, uh, not only skin incision, also muscle sparing procedures. As back problems and spinal pain are such a huge problem in this country, what patients might be candidates for this type of minimally invasive surgery to help them with their problems? So this is a very good question. Absolutely, there's, um, um, unfortunately, about 80% of the population will have uh, experienced some type of back pain in their life. Not every back pain requires surgery, obviously, and that's a good thing. And the first line for every back, the first line treatment for every back pain is actually non-operative management. But in a patient who have a stenosis, this degeneration, or some um, stability, and a minimum base procedure is a very good um, um, approach or technique to um, address the problem. And it, uh, usually the recovery is a little bit faster, actually much faster. Um, they don't need that much rehabilitation to so return fast to work and to activity of daily living. How do you determine whether somebody is a candidate? So when they do have this pain, it's not, you know, really working to use anti-inflammatories or whatever else that they've tried. Then what's the next step? So in the uh, spine surgery or the indication for spine surgery, few things have to speak the same language. Their clinical presentation, the complaint you have, um, show the same um, problem in an imaging finding, MRI, and so on. And once we have the same problem and we know we can help it with a surgical procedure, then it's usually surgery indicated. In the cases where we exactly know if we do this, then the patient will improve significantly in a 90% chance or higher than 90% chance. So uh, the first line treatment always activity modification. We try to do it non-operative anti-inflammatory medication, and also core muscle strengthening is a huge part of uh, prevention, also treatment of the spine um, problem. But there's always a point that non-operative management um, just um, are enough for um, to um, provide enough relief. Then the next step is obviously after having the appropriate um, imaging to uh, perform the appropriate surgery. So with minimally invasive spinal surgery, how long usually is somebody in the hospital? And then what is it like afterward? How soon can they return to activity? So obviously it depends on the on extent of the uh, surgery. For just the compressive surgery, as for stenosis or discectomy, patients leave the same day. Patients are able to leave the same day. 80% of all my decompression or discectomy patients leave the same day. And they're, if they're um, um, back to work within a week, if they have a disc job, uh, if they have a disc job or um, a light duty job. In cases of a heavy duty job, or, um, then it takes about six weeks to return to work. And then how soon should they see results? I know it. it depends on the type of surgery and what their problem was to begin with. But generally, how soon can people feel a reduction in pain or, you know, the shooting pains that go down their legs or whatever reason that they came in to see you? 
Yes, this is a very good question. This is a question I ask um, a lot by my patient. So in terms, like, as you said, the pathology differs the um, outcome. In terms of um, acute disc herniation, and disc, um, having a disc problem compressing on a nerve, you see it immediate relief. And this is really the patient wake up and they have no pain at all. It's a, it's a very um, gratifying moment for us as a physician to see the patient being pain-free and so uh, very grateful for that. There are some other pathology as what takes time. Usually the majority of benefits, um, you see the majority of benefits the first six weeks to three months, and the complete reco- recovery is about six months. In the larger cases, especially in the deformity cases where are multi-level fusion involved and a very long surgery, then a recovery could take up to a year. Is there physical therapy needed after this type of surgery? Again, it depends on the type of surgery. It depends on a patient's activity level. Some patients are very active to start with, but they're usually, yes, yeah, especially after fusion surgery, we send them back to um, rebuild their core muscle to prevent further problems in the future. So let's talk about some of that prevention and strengthening. You've mentioned the core what do you like people do to keep a really good, strong spine? I think working out is very important. It's not only the back muscle, the uh, abdominal muscle, the chest muscle, the uh, entire um, uh, hip muscles. They're all important to keep a stable core. And what I mean by that is you can divide. There's so much pressure we um, have when we walk, when we run, when we do things. And you can... Uh, guide the entire pressure to your spine and you will have back pain or you can divide the pressure to your muscle and spine. By having a very strong core muscle uh, or strong core muscles, then you will, um, the muscle will take a lot of that um, pressure or force away from the spine. So it's, uh, um, it's a divided work so you will see less uh, pain as a result. And also less degeneration. You can decrease the rate of degeneration of the facet joints and disc and so on. Dr. Hassan Zada, tell us about what's going on in the horizon picture for minimally invasive spine surgery. What's really exciting that you're doing there at UVA? I think in a, um, the beauty of the spine surgery is that we can transfer this um, to other fields. One of the um, major advantages we have here by collaborating with other um, teams, not only within the orthopedic, also outside the orthopedic department, uh, we uh, start treating some of the complex factors to the minimum invasive um, uh, techniques. Um, that's a, a huge advantage. We're currently studying it in a um, kind of very biomechanics study to prove it. That's really as stable as um, open procedure. We're convinced that's going to be the future. I think the future will be less soft tissue damage, more um, precise surgery to small incision. Um, having the technology behind us, it's uh, make our work much easier. This is an exciting part uh, to be in, and it's um, UVA is a great place um, because of the um, resources the UVA has, the major institution, and also people are around. That's, your medicine is always a multidisciplinary and a, and a teamwork. If you have the right people in the right positions, and the work is easy and the patient benefit the most. Great information. Thank you so much. For more information on the UVA Spine Center, you can go to uvahealth.com. That's uvahealth.com. You're listening to UVA Health Systems Radio. This is Melanie Cole. Have a great day.